Hello and welcome to Earth Juice. This week a new study has been published showing that the emotional capacity of dogs may be greater than we previously thought, which got us thinking, do animals really have feelings like us? Gregory Burns, a professor at Emory University in America, has been using MRI scans to delve into the brains of dogs. Now, as humans, we're used to seeing dogs wagging their tail, and we make the assumption that that means that they're happy. But how do we know that? How do we know without talking to them and asking them what they're really feeling? Well, what we do know is that in humans, a part of the brain called the chordate nucleus, which is this part here, is stimulated when we enjoy things. So if we study what goes on in this region, we can start to predict what our preferences are for things like food, money, and music. So it figures that if we can study the same part of the canine brain, we might start to get an idea whether dogs really do have feelings. So that is exactly what Professor Burns set out to do, but he had a problem. He first had to train dogs to sit completely still in the cramped and really noisy conditions of an MRI scanner. Only then could he begin to analyse exactly what happens in a conscious canine brain when it is presented with different stimuli. And what Burns found was remarkable. There was an increased chordate response to hand signals that signified food and also to the smells of familiar humans. <laughs> Sam, is that you? <laughs> it's just my lunch. And what this means is that this similar brain activity suggests that dogs do experience emotions in a very similar way to us. But how far can we take that? Just how deep is this emotion that animals feel? Well, it's been a long and emotive debate. As far back as 1872, Charles Darwin wrote a book called The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals. And over the years, we've come a long way from thinking that animals are mere robots that follow hardwired instinctual behaviours to a general consensus or feeling, perhaps, that animals do, in fact, feel some kind of emotion. However, it's all too easy to attribute our own thoughts and feelings onto animals. It's anthropomorphism, and there are obvious difficulties in asking your dog if he or she is pleased to see you. Perhaps the most useful thing is to first establish exactly what feeling is. But again, that's not the most easy thing to do. There is one theory, though, that splits animal emotions into three parts. First up are primary instinctive emotions, such as fear, anger, or surprise, and these are shown by many animals. In fact, even sea slugs show fear. When they're touched, they shrink in size and their blood pressure rises. Secondly, social emotion helps in group situations. So things like sympathy, pride, and embarrassment are all seen in wolf packs and help with their dominance hierarchies. However, some neuroscientists argue that these two types of emotion are automatic and that they are distinct from having true feelings as we know them. But the third is different. It's the feeling that stems from self-reflection. It's the awareness that you're feeling joy or sadness or guilt. But that is very hard to measure. You need to be inside an animal's head to know that. And let's be honest, who is going to go up to a grizzly bear to find out if he's having a good or a bad day. But what about our closest relatives? What can we learn from them? Instances of human-like emotion are common across the great apes, and with facial expressions so similar to ours, it's hard not to think that a chimpanzee is laughing when they're engaging in playful physical contact, or that they're happy to see a long-lost family member. So with the anecdotal evidence of chimpanzees laughing, elephants mourning their dead, dolphins porpoising, and dogs wagging their tails, there also seems to be an increasing wealth of real factual evidence to suggest that animals do indeed experience emotions very similar to ours. So that's this week's juice, but as ever, we would love to hear what you think. Does your pet have feelings? Does it feel happy when you come home or shame because it's ripped the sofa apart? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next week. Ooh, a part of the brain that in humans, and humans. <laughs>